This is Maria Cornelius, 247 Sports. Kelly, tie game at halftime, and then you guys just opened it up in the second half. What, what were the adjustments and the focus that you made from halftime to, the, to close the game? You know, it's another one of those games we didn't make a lot of adjustments. We just got better at our game plan. And I thought we, we set the tone in the third quarter about how we were going to guard. I thought that was the biggest, uh, biggest change from the first half. Um, I thought we, I thought our big lineup was really good for us. We went extended minutes with that in the third quarter. Um, Cassie and Tamari both did a really good job defensively in that third quarter. And um, I thought our transition game was good. We, we got stops and, and converted those on the other end. A very quick follow-up. This is officially your first win as the head coach of Tennessee because of what happened last season. There were, took 713 days to get to this point. Just how big is this win for you personally and for your team? Well, before the game, I told them this is a long time coming. And I'm not just talking about the two weeks we've spent uh, between the SEC tournament and the NCAA tournament. This has been a long time coming. And, and for, for all women's basketball athletes this year, uh, but I, I know I, I was really looking forward to it. I hate that we missed last year. I, you know, I hate that we didn't have that opportunity to, to have that and grow from that. But um, it was fun. I wanted our players to go out and, and enjoy uh, the moment uh, because obviously last year you see how quickly you can get these taken away. All right, our next question is for Jordan Kramer uh, with WATE. You can unmute yourself, Jordan. Hey, Kelly, Jordan Kramer, WATE. Career high in rebounds for Jordan Walker. What just kind of allowed her to play so aggressively today, and how much was that something you worked on during the two weeks off? Um, Jordan Walker is competitive, and she is tough-nosed, plays hard. She, she gets in. She's a really good rebounder. Uh, and I know that's – I know when you look at our team, that's not one of them you'd pick out and check mark that she's a, she's a really good rebounder, but she is. And a lot of that's just effort. And um, I think people forgot to tell her that she's not as big as some of these other players. She doesn't care. She'll stick her nose in it. And um, I thought she made a lot of really good hustle plays for us today. Our next question is from Will Backus from Knoxville News. You can unmute yourself. Um, yeah, this is Will Backus from Knox News. Um, <clears throat> Tess Darby played a lot more today than she normally did. Was that kind of the combat um, MTSU's perimeter presence. And I guess, how did you guys adjust, you know, kind of from the first half to the second half with that? Well, we have actually been working Tess a lot in that small forward position. Um, and, and without Marta Suarez on the court, uh, we knew we were going to have some limited minutes there. Tess has done a really good job um, in the last couple of weeks of, of playing that position for us. We felt like this was a game that she could contribute. I thought she did some really good things. Uh, I thought defensively she was uh, she was really solid, made a lot of plays. She communicates well, which I, in turn, uh, she's an easy player to play with when she's out on the court. Um, and then obviously she spreads the defense out. Okay, our next question is from Joe Rexroad. Joe, unmute yourself. Yeah, Joe Rexroad from The Athletic. Hi, Kelly, I just wondered, um, did you expect to play as much zone as you did today? And did you think the big lineup would work as well as it did in the third quarter? Because like you said, obviously that really uh, took over the game. Well, um, we did. We, we've been practicing a lot on our zone. And uh, when we got the draw, we knew this was a, a possibility to run, run our zone. And I thought our team, as the game went on, I thought we got better and better in our zone. The, our, our big lineup was really good in the first half, uh, the minutes that we played. I wanted to protect them a little bit, go with our four guard lineup uh, defensively um, to finish that half, but was really excited about getting back, uh, getting that big lineup back out there in the third quarter to see what they could do. And I, I thought they did a really nice job. Uh, and, and again, I think it started on the defensive end, but obviously having both of our bigs in there, it, it can be a, a problem matchup wise for some defenses. All right, our next question is for Pepper Persley with ne the next hoops. Pepper, you can unmute yourself. 
Hi, Coach. Congrats on the win today. Pepper Percy with the next hoops. Can you just discuss the impact of Davis and Burrell, in the, especially in the second half? Well, these are two dynamic players. Uh, they're, um, they've been really good for us all season long. Two, two of the best guards. To, I mean, we got – we got a pretty good combo there with these these players, but I thought they played really well uh, 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 downhill. Played downhill really well in the second half. A lot of that had to do with us getting stops and then getting them out and running in transition. And when they play downhill, they're really hard to guard. Our next question is for Luis Fernandez from WBIR TV. Luis, you can unmute yourself. Lewis. All right, we'll move on to our next question. Uh, Gustavo Tomazelli, uh, you can unmute yourself. Can you hear me? Yes. Coach, uh, how much do you see your team improvement develop from that SEC semifinal versus South Carolina to today? You know, you had that long period of, you know, practicing and waiting. How do you see your team coming from that loss to today's game? Well, I think a couple things that we've been able to do. One was work on our zone defense there that really helped us today. We, we knew we would need that, and so that, that's been really good for us. The other thing we worked a, a lot on was working on our patience offensively, and I saw that tonight. I thought we, thought we did a really good job of, of taking our time and, and finding opportunities to be aggressive, but not forcing things. So it, I thought it was much improved from our semifinals game. Our next question is for Chloe Levering, WUTK. Chloe, can you unmute yourself? Coach, um, you know, everybody's been talking about how this season has been so full of overcoming adversity, COVID-related or otherwise, and you guys have been having to overcome adverse adversity and challenges with end games, such as MTSU is, for example, so hard to, um, they don't they don't let a lot of turnover slide and things like that. Do you just feel like this season with all the adversity uh, is, do you feel like this has made your team better at overcoming just challenges in general and especially during this tournament? Yeah, I think we've had our fair share of adversity this year, several injuries, um, some season ending injuries and, um, obviously, just with COVID in general, the pauses, some travel, we, we've had a lot. But I've always felt like the teams that make great runs in the tournament or the teams that end up on top, it's not, it's not been easy for them. I think adversity brings you together. I think adversity challenges you to be better. I think adversity throughout the season prepares you for adversity in the tournament. And uh, there, there's no doubt that you're going to have to overcome it. At some point, you're going to have to overcome it. And I'm hopeful that because we've done that throughout the year, we've had a lot of situations that have not been easy and we have handled it. I'm hopeful that that will carry over. You know, in the first half, Middle Tennessee is making runs. We don't panic. We handle it. We come out. We're better in the second half and we win the ball game. I, I think uh, – I think having adversity is important. You don't go out and look for it, but when you have it, I think you've got to utilize it as a positive. Okay, we have time for probably a couple more questions. Uh, next, we'll go to, back to Jordan Kramer. Uh, Jordan, you can unmute yourself. Hey, Kelly, I actually have Lewis's question. He's dealing with a little bit of mic issues, but Renaya Ray and Cassie were the only players with NCAA experience entering today's game. How important do you feel like it was just to get game one kind of out of the way and maybe breed some confidence in the younger players moving forward? Well, I think it, I think it was important for all of us. Even, even those players that, that have that experience, it's been a while. And, you know, we're, I, I started thinking about that myself. We're young to this tournament. And um, I will say most of our players don't even know what it's supposed to look like. It doesn't look like it normally does with uh, with COVID protocols. Um, so I, th I think they didn't they didn't know what to expect anyway. So <laughs> hopefully that's uh, actually played into played into our favor a little bit. But, um, you know, there's it, it, once you get that first one, you can settle in now and, and you know, hopefully um, 
hopefully really lock in. It's been a long time. We've we've been here a long time without playing a game. So I'm glad we got this first one and now hopefully can just stay locked in and, and be ready to go on Tuesday. Okay, we'll go back to Maria Cornelius. Maria, can you unmute yourself? Coach, I want to ask you about the double Jordans. You have said that Jordan Walker shoots well in practice, and we and that was seen today on the court. And then Jordan Horston, of course, with her six rebound, uh, six assists. Just what, what? How effective are the two of them together on the court? Well, I think they actually play well together. We can move them around a little bit. Um, you know, I think Jordan makes plays. All, uh, I think. Jordan, I guess both of them, Jordans make plays. Uh, Jordan Horston makes a lot of plays with the basketball and transition. She's always looking um, to pass and find teammates. I think Walker makes so many hustle plays, get, grabbing rebounds, sticking her nose in there. I, I think they're a good combination. And I think, um, I think they're both very competitive. And, uh, I'm, and, and their skill set allows us to play them both at the same time. Okay, our final question for Coach Harper will be from uh, Zach Rickens. Zach, you can unmute yourself. Hi, Kelly. Zach Rickens with WVLT. Congrats on the win. Uh, any idea, I know you just got off the court, but any idea kind of what the schedule looks like now? You guys are obviously in Austin. Uh, the next game, correct me if I'm wrong, in San Antonio. Do you know what the next day uh, looks like here with practice and travel? And will you guys kind of just stay in the San Antonio area? Or can you kind of, any idea, can you kind of take me through what the next uh, 24 hours or so looks like? I'll be honest with you, it sounds like you know more than I do at this point. Um, I, I'm not sure. I, I honestly do not know. I know we will uh, have some lunch or get some food here. We will drive back to San Antonio. We will have a COVID test tonight. That is all I know. So I will find out a little bit more information uh, here in a little bit. I. I'm not sure. Do, do we know when our, I don't even know where our game is on Tuesday. Um, I know we play Tuesday, and I know who the I know the winner of Michigan and Florida Gulf Coast is who we play. But that is literally the extent of it. So, um, you know, again, that's the one thing we we um, handle our business, take care of what we can take care of, and we'll figure it out. Um, we're we're not going anywhere. We'll we'll be in in this area.